it should bring your attention to one thing that it's not all about four corners. Are you all right? Coordinates can be used for very interesting things. Okay, so that is what we talked about in the past. Point pattern analysis, what constitutes it? You know, S Y So everything that we talk about so far is it's all about points. Points, 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 points. And then now some statistical, you know, values. Are you okay? Um, we ended last week with the, um, this statistics that we see on the board. Are you okay? Uh, the standard distance deviation, standard distance deviation. And we said that one looks at, you know, the, the X and Y coordinates. It doesn't look at just the X coordinates because the X coordinate alone is not intuitive. It's not interesting. Are you okay? It's only when we look at how the point itself is contributing to the distribution. Are you okay? Uh, then we, we, we can talk about something interesting. Now, I expect all of you to understand how to use this formulas to mix, to do some calculation. Are you all right? And so last week I even tacked on, I used Excel whilst I was teaching you, I opened Excel and I was doing some examples. Please, if you're not sure, sit down, understand the formula you see on the board. Is all right? Ask yourself, if I'm asked a question like this, will I get the answer? God, the funny thing about these online lectures is that when you are asked a question, are you okay if you ask to do an online exam? Are you okay? Where you submit, take home exam. And then you don't know the answer. You call your friend. The, the friend too doesn't have a clue. Are you okay? So now he suggests an answer. That answer is wrong and you've copied. So you're getting zero, zero and it's bad. Please try and understand this. If you don't get it, learn it. Is that okay? All right, today let's move on. Um, go, we got a lot to cover. We want to talk about network analysis. We all know networks. Networks are all around us. We talk about networks. We're talking about road networks. Is that okay? So road networks, why why, why are roads network? If someone says, I, I, I don't have, you have to network. What does it mean? It means you have to connect. Is that okay? So connecting between two, well, a connection between two points, are you okay, or two entities or objects, it's very, very crucial. Are you okay? Why? Because then it allows the distribution of a resource. Is that okay? So if you are connected to me, I can give you something. Are you all right? You can call me after the lecture if we are connected. That's why people talk about connection. And all the connections happen on a network. And someone says, I don't have a good network. Are you all right? That means that you don't have, you know, a network of friends. Are you with me? All right. You find this on some social media, like social media platforms like, LinkedIn, I don't know if you all heard of LinkedIn. It's a website, is that okay? LinkedIn.com, all right? Where your connections, your network, are you okay? If I go there right now, you see that the, the word network is used over there. I want you to understand the word network and hence network analysis. That first of all, let's understand the word network. Example is railway. So what's the commonality between railway and then the route? What, what, there's something, or there's a, there's a distribution of resource on these two networks. On roads, we find cars. On railways, you won't find cars. Is that okay? Of course, there's something called a rail car. But then that type of car is not what we're talking about when we talk about road networks. Are you okay? Human beings don't walk on roads. They are supposed to walk on pavements and cross at zebra crossings. Are you with me? All right. So networks should allow us to normally distribute goods, are you okay, to move people, transport goods, etc. communicate information. So not all networks are actually physical per se. We can talk about computer networks. Are you okay? And then in a computer network, you have the distribution of pack packets. Are you okay? Packets of information. So anybody who is actually learned network engineering will agree with me that networking is like a whole area and the network engineers make money. Are you with me? So networks go beyond the physical. Cable networks, we talk about, um, we have cable in terms of uh, TV. Are you okay? We don't have it in Ghana, but out there we have cable TV and all that. All right. But the, the, the idea is to connect between two points, which later on, in fact, we've already talked about in introduction to GIS or refer to this as um, a node, are you okay? A node, remember that an arc begins with a node and ends with an, a node. So we have a from node and a to node, are you okay? 
Remember, we talk about this under topology, okay? So in the pipeline network, then what are the nodes in the pipeline network, for example? We're talking about the junctions, are you okay, between the pipe. If a plumber comes to your house, or if you've seen the plumbing work, there's always this white, you know, junction, some kind of thing that they use to connect the pipes, are you okay? So at that point, at that junction, Okay, there is a connection, a connection. Are you okay? All right. So the nodes help us to connect. So obviously networks work well with topologically correct data sets. Are you okay? Streams are examples of networks, streams. Are you okay? So one stream joins the other. Are you okay? They talk about, you know, tributaries and all that. We get into the geography. Glaciers. Are you okay? What are glaciers? They're like ice. Are you okay? Ice, you know, that have actually formed over time, become really huge. Are you okay? They are, they are, they are, they are also networked in a way. Are you okay? All right. Phenomena that frequently need to be presented and analyzed in nature anyway. That is tautology for you. Is that okay? So networks, I am repeating, networks are used to move people transport goods, communicate information and control the flow of matter and energy. Is that okay? So there should be, you know, something moving on a network. It's very important for us to know that. So in pictures, as you can see, this is a drainage network. So I didn't talk about drainage net networks, but obviously they are distilling the drainage network. This, ha this should be happening in Ghana a lot. Is that okay? In Accra, especially where there's a lot of flooding. So we can talk about drainage networks. Is that okay? If the, net the drainage network is not, um, you know, well established, then you have an issue with flooding, isn't it? And as a country, we have grappled with this issue for far too long. Is okay, and I think we are not thinking. Are you right? We are not. We 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 are not using knowledge. We are not applying knowledge. Are you with me? If you understand the simple definition of a network, then you simply make sure that all your gutters, your gullies, all your drainage network, all of them are clean and open to allow for that flow. Are you okay? Of water in that case. Otherwise, then you're gonna have a choke. So here, this uh, landing underground. Are you okay? The different colors of lines represent different, you know, paths for the trains to move on. Is that okay? All right. Once you sit in a train from one node, say this node here, okay, and you are moving on the red path, the red routes, okay, the routes, so routes, then you, you can never turn right. You just keep on going unless you get down at the next node. Are you okay? The next intersection. So an intersection can be represented and modeled as a node in GIS. Are you okay? All right. So there you go. So networks are very, 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 very important. You can see more of them here. These are, you know, huge network of pipes. Are you okay? We can talk about electrical network, power power networks, are you okay? All right, so here we have the electricity, telephone networks, are you okay? When you think about the fact that we have to connect from pole to pole, yeah, light, uh, low voltage to high voltage, all of that, pulling cables around, you can see the effort being made to make sure that service reaches everywhere, are you okay? All right, so that's a stream up there. All right, so in network analysis, it's very important to have attributes. We have to collect data. Everything revolves around data. It's okay, the data has to be accurate. It has to be up to date. It has to be topologically correct in terms of vector data. I mean, we're talking about lines connecting to lines. If your lines don't connect, very, okay, I think Anabons, you raised your hand. Can we have you? Yeah, go ahead, Anabons. Hello. Anabons, did you put up your hand? Okay, all right, I'll move on. I think it's just by mistake. All right, so like I said, we need to have data up to date. For example, on a road network, if we can predict what happens 
you know. No, sir, I, it's it's not a mistake. Oh, oh okay, my network okay. was okay. terrible. Uh, okay, okay, go uh-huh. ahead. Go sir, ahead. Mm-hmm. I'm saying with the uh with occupational hazard relating to say this the networks. So yes. this one is just a bit by the way. I just want to know with mm. the telephone cables. So does it also uh, does it have uh, like shocks? Does it also give shocks? So I just <laughs> want to know. I'm just with, asking. With which one? Is it the the telephone cables? So the I internet think... cables. Mm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The ones uh, that are being laid. No, normally it shouldn't give you a shock, but unless there's a fault, obviously. Yes, even though, like okay, you said, this question, engineer. this question is not really related, but um, yes, I sir. think that's electrical engineering. Uh, but obviously, said, why don't we build yeah. closer to the yeah, reason for not wanting us to build close to the these kind of poles? Yeah, exactly. That's that's that question is uh, yeah very relevant. Let me just say that there's been um, a whole lot of assumptions made. Are you okay? People have actually had their own, I don't know what I, it's not, they, they're not being superstitious, but they've heard that you could actually contract a disease, are you okay, from uh, these telephone masts, is that okay? So the telephone masts, a lot of people suspect that you could actually get uh, some kind of, you know, disease from it. Is it true or not true? Uh, we have to analyze and find out. Are you okay? Okay. Yes. All right. We, all right. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's, 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 it's not a here nor there. Um, it could cause radiation from any system, you know, can alter your, you know, your body, your, the cells in your body can be altered because don't forget that we got this information, that genetic information. That's how our system is built. Are you okay? So um, if the wrong information is sent to your body cells, then it could cause some kind of cancer or something like that which you don't want because it's going to kill you are you okay all right so people are really worried about the location of the telephone mast and the role of gis in this is to find out if people who suffered from say childhood leukemia are you okay which is like a cancer of a sort take all the location of people who suffered from that disease are you okay plot it down and then find out if you know it, they, they close your particular mast, tele, uh, communication mast. Are you okay? So it will be a good, you know, experiment to do. So the masts, they stand tall like that. Are you okay? And um, they radiate so that your phone can receive. Are you okay? A signal. So anytime your phone rings, there's a signal being sent to it. Are you okay? All right. So um, this. What you just asked, are you okay? Represent, uh, or I mean, it's actually, it belongs to the point part analysis, are you okay? We can look at locations where I've put the X, you know, we have the telephone masts, are you okay? So if you record all the locations of the telephone masts, this type of analysis is a point pattern analysis. Are you okay? Then you find out, okay, what is actually in the middle? Are you okay? What is going on here? Then you find out that there's a mast. Then you can start investigating. Are you okay? And you find out maybe the mast is what is causing these diseases. But you need to do this with, you know, collect this data over time, maybe over 10 years. Are you all right? And then do the analysis. Um, here, the answer to your question, or your question is not about networks. Even you see, so because the lecture right now, the topic now is network. So we need to, as a student, try to try to place the discussion and the lecture topics appropriately. Right. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. So, right. so if I ask, if you, if I ask you a question on, do you think that that the placement or the location of uh, communication mass has influenced uh, the cancer? Are you okay? Cancer cases, people are getting cancer then your answer shouldn't be network. It should be point, point parts analysis and clusters. Are you okay? Okay, all, all right. right. Yes. Meanwhile, let's not forget that communication must also form a network, okay? So I could actually, um, let me try and get this off. Actually, I could actually draw a line between this one. Okay, and then now it's a network. So now I've moved away from 
childhood leukemia, I'm probably looking at telephone mast as a network. Are you okay? Not as okay. what point pattern analysis. So that one is also there. Then I can do an analysis based on that. All right. Sir. Okay. So this is what GIS application is about. We need to look at um, different problems. Okay, from different perspectives. Okay, but the most important thing is that before you can do any sort of analysis, you need to make sure that you have met certain requirements, especially data requirements. They should be accurate. If you collect data that's not accurate, we can rely on it for an analysis. Also, the attributes of the network, are you okay? You know, revolves around the node, the, net, the, node, the attributes of the node and then attributes of the link. Okay? Every network is made up of nodes and links, okay? Or edges and junctions, are you okay? All right, so these road conditions, are you okay? If this road is actually tarred, then we need to all take note of that. Are you okay? So road condition tarred, it's a road condition, are you all right? Maybe there's, there's, there's a pothole on it. Okay, so now, that is an attribute, are you okay? We can also look at classification and look at root class, class A, class C, are you okay? We need to store all this information in our attribute table, is that all right? We need to store this in our attribute table. Um, is it a one-way street, yes or no? We need to be able to store that Okay, maybe yes, maybe no. Are you okay? So all that information is restored. Speed restrictions, okay? You can't go above 70 kilometers per hour. We need to store that. Are you okay? So speed restriction 70, all right? So we keep all this, then we now go into the analysis. So these are the data requirements that we should have a whole lot of work data and without that data for example it's very important to know that your topology yeah if you've not you don't have topology and force in your network analysis you are wasting your time if you don't have topology and force it means that you have lines moving they're not really well connected are you okay here there's probably a t-junction but what are you having you're having two lines which are not which are disconnected are you okay? So we have an issue. We have to deal with these issues. Then we can move on and start network analysis. So if by the time you press your button and you say, tell me the shortest route, you already ensure that you have good data. Are you okay? All right. So network analysis much depends on the network data set. Is that okay? All right. Let's look more at the network and what it is. The most important thing is to understand what it is, and then we are okay, and we'll be good to go. It's all right. A network is one of five basic entity types, which means that we can have other entity types which are not networks. Are you okay? A network can be defined as a set of linear features through which resources flow. Please, this, um, this is like the fifth time I'm saying this. This is like the fifth time I'm saying, I'm saying it again. A network can be defined as a set of linear features. It has to be linear. If it's not linear and it's point, you are out. It's not a network you are looking at. You are looking at something else. Are you okay? We have a, a set of points like that. These are, this is not a network. This is a point distribution, point pattern kind of. This is not a network. Are you okay? So a point, our network should be what? Lines. And these lines should allow something should be flowing through it. Nodes are used as origins and destinations. Are you okay? And then links, which are really lines, traverse from one node to the other. Are you okay? So if you have a network, then there should be a starting point and there should be an end point. And there should be a line or an arc that connects the two points. And it's assumed that there is some sort of, you know, resource moving through it. Are you okay? from one point to the other, is okay. Then you are having a network. This is a network, are you okay? Now, what is the benefit of having a network? We can now share resource. That means that I can actually distribute something. 
Are you okay? Between this point and then that point. Are you okay? All right. Okay. So there you go. That's one point there. That's one point. There. That's another point. But then we have a connection. So with every network, look out for the nodes. Look out for what? The lines or the edges or the links. These are all, you know, they all mean the same thing. So in networks, nodes are junctions, are synonymous to junctions. Links are synonymous with edges, links, okay? Edges, links are the same, are you okay? Lines, arcs, they all mean the same thing. So lines are joining at certain points. These are the junctions. And that's why most of the problems we have in our road networks happen at the junctions. Remember that, is that okay? Because that is where we have the conflict. There are two. Uh, there's a sharing of resource at that point. Are you okay? To be able to get to Kumasi, you need to get to a particular route. Then Samam route. Are you okay? If you are using it in some direction, to get through, go through Eastern Region, then you have to use what the Abri road. Is that okay? And go through um, um what do you call that place? Um, is it? I forgot the way we have the toll booths. Are you okay? Going up the mountains. Um, yeah, so we need to understand the, the benefit of having a network. Every network should have um, certain properties and attributes. So the link should have a length. Are you okay? The link should have a length. The link, the link should have length. How long is it? Should have a direction. Are you okay? Later we find out that the link can also have just the value, it doesn't have to be a, the length or the distance. It can be, say, the dollar value. Is it okay? How much does it cost to move from here to that place? If it costs me 100 million and from here to just behind me, it's costing me 10 million, then that is some kind of are you okay cost. We will look at the link, you know, the value of a link as a cost later on. Is it okay? Every link should also have a direction. Are you okay? You can also have that then connectivity, and we can also talk about part parties. Is that okay? So um, that is network. You need to understand, please. You can have networks that are oriented. Some of them are not oriented. Some have loops. Some are not looped. Are you okay? For example, you can have train networks where you move from Accra to Tamale, and then you move from Tamale back to Accra on that same link. Are you okay? Such a such a network is not looped. Is that okay? It's not looped. Is all right. Um, you can have a network in which you move in one direction. Are you okay? Or there's no direction at all in the network. So water like this, I, I, I've had a few issues with my system, you know, my water in the house, poly tank to my house. And then there was a lot of water in my poly tank, but it wasn't getting to the, you know, the, 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 the washrooms and all that. And I had to call a plumber and then he fixed a unidirectional valve. Are you okay? So the valve kind of serve as a junction and then determine which direction the water flo flowed. Are you okay? So at that point, then you realize that you are having some kind of um, a network in which there is no orientation per se. Are you okay? You can move in any direction. Are you all right? So those, the, these are also part of what the description of a network. So here we are actually describing an unoriented um, network. An oriented network gives you the direction. Um, here, there's a loop in it, which means you can start from one place and come back to the same place. Up here in the unoriented, um, with our loops, you can realize that we can we cannot come back to certain points. Are you okay? You can just move and not come back again to where you started from. Are you okay? All right, so we can have oriented networks with loops. Is that okay? So a few questions for you. Reverse flow in one direction only. That's an oriented, are you okay, network. Routes, are routes oriented or not oriented? It depends, you can have, are you okay, one-way streets, remember? They are oriented. We can also have the rail track, are you okay? But really, I don't think this is our focus. We just want to know that that exists. In every net, we really, the topic is network analysis. We know what networks are now, but how do we analyze it? Guys, this um, Zoom meeting will end in about six minutes. When it ends, we'll use the same link. Hopefully it will work. All right, so please take note of that. Okay, let's look at 
the network analysis itself. At the end of it, honestly, we need to search, we need to find out. Um, typically look at Uber. If you are here, if you are listening to me and you've used Uber before, you've already you know, learned something about network operations. Is that okay? And so one of the things we do is that we want to find out on the network, are you okay? How we get from one point to the other, is that okay? So normally you have a set of you know, interconnected lines and you know, find out how do I move from one point to the other, is okay? So this is a typical network, is that okay? So how do I actually move? What's the shortest path, are you okay? All right, of moving. Sometimes to, for security reasons, you decide that I want to, I want to move in west-west directions only. So give me the path that will get me from here to Kumasi, but I don't want to be moving northwards. Is that okay? That's security for you. The president is moving. You know that, that that's what security is about. People think security is about being macho and having some muscles. Are you okay? And then some macho men are moving. That is not security at all. Security is information, knowing just knowing what to do. Are you okay? All right. So that's a typical. So at the heart of every network analysis, it's a search. Procedure. So there is an algorithm. I okay. The key word here is an algorithm. So as you can see, the the word this word up here, yeah, algorithm, which is really a step by step. You know, we've all learned some algorithm, haven't we? Yeah, step by step instruction to get a problem solved. The algorithmic, you know, problem solving, is what we are using here. In other words, we end up with a software. Are you okay? We end up with a software in network analysis. We always end up with, with a software. And the software is supposed to help us to now move and find a direction, a route. Example here, one can seek to find a route that passes through the fewest number of nodes, even if it is not necessarily the route of lowest cost. This happened in the US where they have what they call, I think the freeway or so there's a particular route network hierarchy which you can get to, and you will drive on and on for kilometers. You can't turn left, you can't turn right, but it only gets you from one city to another city. Is that okay? So we haven't gotten there yet. If you want to get to Kumasi, you have to go through in Koko by all means. It's like, you have no choice. You can't fly over it, are you okay? And that is where we need to get to. Multi-hierarchy networks, is that okay? All right. So moving on network analysis solves those problems are you okay what is the shortest path are you okay that is that so the shortest path algorithm was actually designed by or developed by a guy called distra is that okay i wish it was designed by a ghanian then i'll have a ghanian name here is that okay but this is someone's grandfather are you okay who has actually done this we are grandfather i think they were eating fufu and abenko isn't it let's talk about the truth Eh? Jerry John Rollins is dead, so let's all be bold. It's okay. He was bold. Let's all be bold. <laughs> uh, some of our fathers, they, were, they didn't do anything. That's it's a shame. That's a shame. Let's face it. Mr. Boom Boom. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, basically, <laughs> let's face it. This is someone's uh -huh. uncle here, Dijkstra. And he sat down and he designed a step by step process, finding the shortest path the between two points on a network. Is that okay? And he we called it the distress algorithm. If I which could have just called it the shortest path algorithm, but this is his. We're giving credit to him. Is all right for what he did. All right. So distress algorithm. How does it work? And I wish I had my PowerPoint here to show you. So you have a network of you know points A, B, C. D, E, F, G, is that okay? And you want to find out how, what's the quickest path or the shortest path between A and G, okay? It's a question. So this trust said, don't worry, this is what you're gonna do. Simply start by taking the nearest node, is that okay? So the nearest node to A, is it B or C? The cost or the distance is indicated by the numbers that are shown on the screen. So from A to C, the distance is C. In other words, it will take you, say, two kilometers. It's all right. And A to B is three. It's okay. That means you take us about three kilometers to get there. So the shortest, you know, or the closest node is C. Is that all right? The shortest route for now 
a C. That's what this was said. Then from C, we now start looking at the other links. How do I get, what is the, cl the closest link? Cumulatively, I will now try two plus two and I'll get four. That will take me to B, is that right? Okay. Then he said, okay, what if you go to the other point? Two plus one, that is three. Is that okay? So it means that going from A to B, now three, but A through C to B is four. Are you okay? So now I, I'm not going to consider going through A through C. Is that okay? Through B. Is all right. So now I discard that. Now A to C plus is two plus four, you give us six. So A to C to F, that will give us six. That will give us six. Is that okay? So six plus two is eight. So it will take me eight units to get to G. Is that all right? But how, how much will it take us, or how what's the distance from A to C to D to J? So remember, this is eight. That one is two plus one plus three, which is actually six. Is that okay? So it should take me six kilometers. It will take six 